Warning, the following video very likely contains heavy amounts of swearing. Hi there, it's your pal Carl Welshman. He's on his way down now to Craft Republic. Just did a little spray there out of my mouth. Don't worry about it, don't worry. Walking through the beautiful streets of Bari. Let's just flip this round and see where we're going. Just down. There we go. Jeez, fucking hell, this is a steep hill. This uh, house up here was used in uh, Being Human. Um, and shortly after the series was cancelled. But there was at one time a werewolf and a vampire and a ghost in there. Now when I was a little lad, I say little lad, when I was a fucking teenager and arcade machines were at the height of popularity, I used to walk with my cousin across Barry Town to Barry Island. And to get to Barry Island, the shortcut that we took was through Barry Docks. Now back then, Barry Dock was that, exactly that, just a big old fucking dock with ships, very dangerous, rusty bridges and stuff that you could go across, bits of old fucking train track, tra tra train track. It was just bits in general. There was a fucking dumping ground, absolute mess, just left. Not really not much going on. A few little, like, I say a few little, a few big trade warehouses and storage and all that crap. Okay for a couple of guys during the day, Cutting across to get to the arcade to play the old Street Fighter 2 and Mortal Kombat. Definitely not the sort of place that you'd want to go at night. Um, that's, that's all changed now. I was massively surprised as we cut through High Street and Barry down the bottom street, which, to be honest with you, that could do with a bit of either fucking doing up or knocking down um, past the sort of weather spoons in the Barry Hotel past the fucking countless pizza and kebab takeaways that were all next to each other. There's one there, Miss Penny's Chicken or some shit like that. That's been there since I was fucking 15. I remember walking past that when I was going to college. The same fucking artwork on the front of it. And it was like stepping into another world as we went through this tunnel, which normally when I was a lad would have led you to a place where you'd have undoubtedly been robbed you're now walking through this tunnel into this fucking beautiful area called good sheds containers which are packed with little independent businesses little craft places and retro clothing and food and it's really really homely and cozy and inviting i, I loved it now craft republic is set in amongst all of this beauty and we walked in me and my brothers, and we're immediately greeted by the barman, who Alex. Alex, as soon as we got there, he said, do you guys know how this works? And I didn't, I'd never been before. My brothers, they were like, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So Alex set us up at a table. Craft Republic was big, it's open, nice and clean, big windows, big open tables. It's all set up to be a nice social, experience rather than maybe a little hidden clandestine fucking pub pint where you're having a little sip by yourself and when alex was asking us if we'd been there before and you know if we knew how it worked it was because what you've got then on your table once you sat down is a little stack of qr codes which you can use your phone and get your beer selection see what's on tap on your phone right you got a little buzzer on the table and you press that and the bar staff come over. And for us, as I mentioned earlier, it was Alex. And you're able then to choose your beer off your phone and say, this is what I'm after. Now, don't worry about it if you're thinking, fucking hell, I haven't got a mobile phone or I don't like QR codes. Menus projected up onto the wall so you can see exactly what's on tap. Screens everywhere, so you don't have to worry about that. As well as beautiful selection of craft beers, there's craft ciders. I took a little walk around, you had fridges filled with not only just standard IPAs and your standard beers, right? They had all of the fucking sours and mad beers you could ever want. Um, for me, this is brilliant. 
This is brilliant. This is something I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to work through a pile of random fucking sours with other people. I haven't got anyone that's as passionate or into craft beers as much as I am in my social circle. So for me that day to sit with my brothers, picking some mad shit from the fridge, right? Just mad sours, sharing them out, all having a little taste and then, you know, talking about how insane it was. Perfect. Fridges filled with these beautiful beers. The guy that was looking after us, Alex, was fucking great. Totally knowledgeable, totally passionate. That was the big thing, he was passionate. Every beer that we were picking from the selection that were either in the fridges or from the menu that they had on tap, Alex could tell us all about it. He could tell us about the hops that were in it. He was telling us openly whether it was a beer that he enjoyed. There was one that he suggested that he could only drink half a pint of because he found it a bit dry. And it was just nice to have somebody that knew what they were talking about, as well as just being a down to earth, really cool guy. Afternoon went on and the beers were going in. We'd have only been too happy to have welcomed Alex to our table. Now, as you might know, if you've watched other videos on my channel, I'm not the most social person, so I don't say that lightly. With regards to food in Craft Republic, I noticed that they had a couple of bar snacks. You could get your crisps and all of that. But the other thing that's brilliant about the, uh, the venue is that they allow you to bring food in from outside. And just outside, you've got pizzerias, you've got like your places where they do the dirty chips, you've got Greek food, you've got fucking places that donuts about this big. And they're only too happy for you to bring food in from the outside whilst you have a tasty drink. My brother actually packed a selection of cheeses. We had pork scratchings, we had corn sausages, we had kebab flavored crisps, we had sweet chili sensation nuts, we had some spicy puff shrimp puff crisp things that smelt like really bad genital hygiene but they fucking tasted great and that's the main thing it was a strange combination but as the day drew on those sweaty cheeses were going down the treat i was eating one of those mexicana ones it was so moist by the time i got out of the packet it was beyond room temperature because of the hot sunshine coming through the window so i was just giving it a little squeeze and just pretty much just sucking that cheese so that it all melted into my mouth Delicious. In my other pub visits as well, I always talk about the toilets. They're a big thing for me. I think that if you're, if you've got an establishment and your toilets are fucking stinking, right? I find it then difficult to trust the hygiene of the rest of the place. Okay, toilets should be a nice little sanctuary that you go in, do your thing, feel nice and clean, feel refreshed once you've done your, dropped a couple of deuces or done a wee or done whatever it is that you need to do in the toilet should feel nice and refreshed and clean. You shouldn't be going into a toilet, right? And coming out feeling dirtier than when you went in. The toilets were lovely. They were easy to find, which is also important for me as well. I fucking hate it when you go into a place, you're having a drink and you start sort of looking around going, where are fucking toilets? You get a little bit nervous, if you're like me. And then you're like, having to maybe go and ask somebody where the toilet's at. You don't want to be sharing with strangers that you need to go to the fucking toilet. Craft Republic, didn't have to worry about that. Toilets were nice and easy to find. They had two individual, you know, toilets. So it wasn't like male, female or anything like that. Two individual toilets that you went in. Now I love these sorts of toilets. They're really, really good during the quiet time during the day, but I do find it a bit stressful in the evenings when there's only a couple of toilets and you can't tell whether there's someone in there and you're sort of apprehensively sort of, you know, stood at the door, but that's not when I do my drinking. So when ain't my fucking problem, uh, the toilets were immaculate. They smell fresh, they smell clean. I love the, the wall decor, fucking brilliant. Absolutely lovely, felt like going, I do you know what? They were probably cleaner than my own bloody toilets that I've got in my house, so fucking well done. Well done, Craft Republic, on those beautiful toilets. They also had dog treats on the bar as well, so if you do go in there with your, your, little, your little hairy friend, not me, <laughs> your hairy fucking friend, your hairy dog, or maybe hairless dog, maybe your dog's got no hair, all right? I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened, do I? Got 
got snacks there that you can give to your dog and you can be having a little snack, not on a dog snack, on your own snacks, or you can eat some of the dog snacks if you want. I mean, you do get to a point when you've drunk a lot where everything starts to look delicious, doesn't it? Music in the background was good as well. We had a bit of Stereophonics that jumped out. We had a bit of Tonight Tonight by Smashing Pumpkins. That was the, the kind of style of music that we had that afternoon, which was absolutely perfect for, for myself and for my brothers because we were very much into that style of music. That takes us way back to the good old days of the 90s and noughties. So it was great to get those little nostalgic bursts as well as we were having our beers and me and my brothers were like, oh, I didn't remember this song. And yeah, it was oh, nice, nice, good music, good music. Usually when I do these sort of pub things, I'll have just stuck to pints and I'll have only had three or four pints. And that doesn't take me too long to talk through. But as me and my brothers were drinking some mad shit from the fridges and splitting it between us, we did get through quite a lot of beers in between our pints. We got there and the first pint that I had was Verdant, written in water, coming in at a 6.5%. These are the notes that I took. Tasty bastard, hoppy, fluffy mouthfeel, damn refreshing, tropical as you like, nearly as nice as in Bongo. Bongo is my fucking go-to beer, so it's going to have to be fucking magic in a tin to beat that, but this was a close, tasty beer. And I've said there that... I had been looking forward to a fresh beer for a few days and that fucking beer did not disappoint. Now from there, we decided to go for the giant raspberry blueberry bubblegum bottle coming in at an 8.2% from Vault City. Alex did turn around and say, you've gone from normal to absolutely crazy very quickly, guys. And he was right, we did. Now I'd had the original version of this uh, released by Vault City a few months ago and I am gonna do a, a proper review of this because I've got some in the garage but notes that I took were extra sour, it really was. It was really, really sour, way more intense than the uh, original release uh, with the lower ABV. My mouth and my brother's mouths were fucking blue borderline black after two sips of this stuff. It was sweet. You had like the little, it felt like the sherbet in your mouth, like the sugary coating that you get on those sorts of sweets. Uh, much more closer to how those sweets are um, with this release than the uh, the previous release of this blueberry bubble gum, but we, I'm gonna come back to that in way more detail, but that's where we went next. We followed that up with Funky Fluids, Triple Gelato, Nero Ice Cream Sour coming in at 5.5%. Sweet at the front, not sickly though, just nice and sweet at the front. Not as sour as we were expecting. Creamy, marshmallow, vanilla finish. It was one of those drinks where you were getting these little bursts of fruit as you were swallowing it. And then when you sort of breathed out at the end, you just got this really, oh, it was really vanilla -y, really ice creamy, bloody lovely. Really enjoyed that. We followed that up with Yonder S'more, so chocolate covered biscuit toasted marshmallow stout, coming in at 7.5%. Very rich, very rich, dark chocolate biscuity, like just like a big dark chocolate biscuit and then cheeky marshmallow just kept popping through there. Very nice, very nice. After that, we moved on to pints. And I went with Polly's Brew, the Hop Studio Wyama, Wyamia. Carl, write it down there so people know what I'm saying. That was coming in at a 5.2% dry, quite bitter, quite hoppy. Um, and I don't know whether that was off the back of having this sort of chocolatey marshmallow beer previously, but um, it was quite bitter. Okay, I don't think... I was enjoying it quite as much as the uh, the Verdant, but still it was a nice pint. We moved back onto tins then, we went with Play Brew Co. Foamy Banana and Milkshake Creamy Pale Ale. That was coming in at a 5.2%. Um, it didn't sound nice. It was bitter, 
kind of gross to be honest with a aftertaste of pretend banana not a nice experience that was a big miss on that one we then decided to move on to yonder mystery beer number three which on the tin said a pastry stout with a mystery flavor at this point we were pretty pissed and in my notes what i've written is fuck nose hazelnut tastes nice quite mild nutty chocolatey could be sticky toffee pudding sticky toffee and nut yeah who knows guys who knows i genuinely do find that sometimes i need to read the tin and i've said this in beer reviews i, I do need to read the tin to get an idea of what the fuck it is that i'm i'm tasting and i think with a stout when you start fucking around with toffee and nuts and all they, they all become much of a muchness um so it was it was nice enough but i i really wasn't fucking sure on what it was from there then we went to yonder apple blackberry toasted oak crumble coming in at a 6.5 percent i i thought it would be stronger like a bit more sour and a bit more of an onslaught but um you got apple you got your sourness pleasant cinnamon finish and just at the end there was just this blackberry tang like a tang that just hit your mouth as well it was it was literally a fucking blackberry apple and blackberry crumble in a tin it, it captured it great and there we went vault city raspberry cream soda coming in at 4.8 percent my notes i've put sweet as fuck not sour sickly a bit of a meh and um yeah i i, I do have a, a vague recollection of it being quite meh that was the last of the tins that we had that day favorite standout one that stuck out for us was the funky fluid gelato that was just delicious it was complex and we never tasted anything like it it was bloody lovely and then we finished up the day with another pint i had a pint of daya steady rolling man coming in at 5.2 percent note say easy fucker to drink tropical a little bit dry but tasty overall and um, my favorite beer of the day out of the pints was the verdant written in water the first beer when i got in that day it could be a bit biased because it was the first beer of the day and i was super excited to have a beer i would happily just sit drinking pints of that in the sunshine tasty bastard it's, it's definitely put the woodworkers on my radar now i've not been to the woodworkers at time of recording and uploading this video that's a tap room which is in Belfast, which has a nice rotation of different beers from what I can see online. The bar has been set high by Craft Republic. I know that's a bar that's not in Belfast, but it's um, with regards to quality of venue, cleanliness of toilets, selection of beers in both the fridges and on tap, not to mention the amazing staff. Yeah, the bar has been set high and I would just hope that we've got something as close as this in Belfast. So. Going to go to the woodworkers at some point and we'll get my experience recorded of that. And then I'd like to try and get myself out to both the Boundary and Bullhouse tap rooms just to see what the experience is like there as well. We'll try and get that done at some point. When? Who knows? But anyway, if you're in Barry, South Wales, can't recommend that place enough. Plenty to drink, plenty to see lots of food all around the venue but yeah craft republic fucking nice one